The, uh, the Cora Boat Building Workshop was a spin-off from year two of Arts in the Wetlands Summer Scheme. Holga Lons, along with other artists, set about a workshop for the, the children to build miniature model curs. At the same time, Holga set about making a large curra and he was building away at this in a field. Local people, just out of interest, would have called down to see what Holga was doing. That then gave us an idea to run workshops for the Curra Boat Building. I first got interested in the Curras after seeing Holgers at Oxford Island, and I thought I wanted one of those. We talked about being a cross-community project, and there'd be interest in people from all walks of life. It was just a Holger called looking for a restaurant, and he had the, the Curra on the trailer, and I asked could I have a look at it, and uh, he said of course, and it started really from that. The frame of the Dunfanaghy Corrach is a basic A-frame that means that uh, the gunnels, the top frame and the seat are one structure which is in itself very, very rigid. The frames are made of large in this case. Uh, they're bolted together with stainless steel bolts and wherever the scarf joint is, where the main gunnel goes into the bow, there are extra supports with galvanized uh, steel strips. <laughs> The ribs were made from hazel. They are stretched across from gunnel to gunnel. To actually fix the ribs, uh, you drill holes at intervals along the, both gunnels, sharpen down the ends of the hazel so that they fit in, leaving them proud a couple of inches above the gunnels. Um, then those can be uh, sliced and then wedged. This will fix them into the gunnels. Th this also gives you the opportunity to actually tighten the canvas when, once the canvas is on. Those two pieces of hazel are shaped and tied together. Obviously uh, the pieces of hazel are shorter and tighter at uh, the fore end of the boat and the end of the boat is squared off. It's really by eye that you, that you do this to get, to get the shape of the boat. Um, then the stringers are tied to the ribs. There were measurements to, uh, to get the uh, length of the hazel right along the whole length of the boat, but uh, most people just did it by eye, which seemed to be good enough. Brings in a bit of variety in, in the, the, the four different curves, but all in all, it seemed to work out quite well. Everybody did it to their own uh, personal preference. <laughs> The stringers run from the front to the back of the boat and they're made from pine or larch and their purpose is to keep the canvas off the frame. Apparently the stringers have developed from willow rods. The structure of uh, the Korak has evolved from a simple basket frame and uh, the next stage of that development would be what is now the Boyne Korak which is a hazel structure without a wooden frame on the top. Then that wooden frame was added and later it developed into a double frame. When you've tied the 400 knots using marlin twine, you put the footrests in. Probably the hardest bit was maintaining enthusiasm really. 400 or more knots all the same, you know, with short spaces in between them and difficulty of getting your fingers in, could get very frustrating at times and a few different methods were worked out to make it easier. Strangely enough, different method each week was found to be easier. <laughs> About the 1820s, they switched from leather-covered corax to uh, canvas-covered corax, uh, which were then waterproof with coal tar and pitch. And the early leather was either bark tanned or was uh, used as rawhide and then pitched and tarred like they do with the canvas nowadays. The sheets were first laid out and uh, marked and then uh, shaped and were then uh, sewn on the sewing machine in sections. The canvas we have used is a uh, 15 ounce cotton canvas, fairly heavy, and uh, we try to stitch it together with different kinds of thread, including wax thread, which we try to wax ourselves. We use an industrial sewing machine instead of uh, using a palm, a needle, or 
Sometimes what we did use a speedy stitcher, which is this little nifty gadget, which increases the speed of hand stitching. Then after the whole skin was ready, we put it on to the boat and tacked it on with copper tacks uh, overlapping them at the gunnels. And then after that was done, uh, we tightened the whole structure by simply tapping the the couples, the, the ribs down and wedging them in with little oak wedges so the whole thing was like a drum skin. With the tar in the uh, fur the middle and uh, it was threatening in the rain but it didn't. We were running about in the romper room suits and sort of the, the quarantine mass and sort of it was like something like you know, from a radioactive site. The first boat was started just trying to brush it on but I found that was very slow and then the tar was starting to cool down very quickly. So after that I decided like well but just try and pour the tar on and then get the guys to sort of spread that with the brush and then that'll give us a better soak through the canvas. We brought one boat out after the other and like no, about quarter past nine with all four boats tarred with the first coat. So got the tar boiled up, got the weather, sun still in the sky, still dry, let's go for the second coat. So it was a dirty job and I just felt like no, blast it, get it out of the road in the one, the one session. So uh, it worked out really well. Well, we have tarred the boat now for a week. It is still soaking wet. Uh, the floor in the workshop is a total mess. And uh, I think if we're getting sort of similar weather that we've had outside already, like no cool, wet, etc., it'll probably take another two or three weeks to dry. The oars are made from large again and uh, they are partly sewn down first and they go from a square shape near the handle into a round shape then into an oval shape and at the blade actually into a diamond shape. They are just paired down with uh, spoke shapes and block planes and then sanded. And then uh, the fairly big block or clock as they call it in Loch Ney, is attached near the handle and it uh, is a counterweight. The uh, construction is fairly unique to the area of Ulster. It's basically determined by the single thole pin. It swivels on the pin, it can be left in the water while you're fishing, stabilizing the boat a little bit. One of the aspects uh, that we thought would be great within this project was uh, reskilling people. The modern hand tools and drills and sort of electric planers and all like that. Well, like the Donegal men didn't use that, they didn't have that. We tried to sort of uh, maintain that theme. Uh, like, no, the old hand tools, like, no, they worked every bit as well. The whole thing was very interesting, both from the history point of view, the construction, the bits that went wrong, comparing the different shapes of the boats. <laughs> Will they float? I hope so. It took me a bit longer than uh, we really anticipated. It was definitely worth getting involved because we've had a great crack. 
I, I suppose like you know, we're a very diverse group. Made some good friends. Even managed to get Arthur to make the tea one time. People from the area working together with a common interest and that's people built. And the people in this workshop set up in Unit 3, it was a prayer workshop, four walls, a light. That was it. And when I went down today and opened the door, there's a whole workshop set up in there. There's a full transformation of everything, people and places. No two boats are the same as you would expect from handmade objects. They're all going to have their strong points and their downsides and their big ones. With a boat built out of pin sticks, it's very difficult, well, impossible to get two the same. And if they're not two the same, there's no two ever going to handle the same. But we have secured further funding to carry on these workshops and look at other boats, especially boats which would be from this area and would have been used on the lock years ago during our ancestors' time. Again for what? taking what? part. What's that for? What's that for? Should we for not cheating? Team, everyone here. I'd like to thank Holger for taking the time and effort, driving the whole way from Calvin and every Thursday night, torturing us. <laughs> so you can all see the end result. On a round of applause, please. Thank you. Very enjoyable. Great You've got a touch of colour. <laughs> <laughs> It's the sun. <laughs> 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 Obviously there's a social value coming together of people who have an interest in, in Loch Ness, people who have an interest in the boating tradition, um, but many of the people, if you look around, have an interest in heritage and culture as well, um, and the value is retention of all that, and coming together and, and making a, something sustainable, something that's been around for literally thousands of years, and what we want to do is improve upon it and make sure that it stays here.